Hi, these comments are for GE and I am Michael from OTC Online TOEFLCourse.com and you have some questions about the integrated writing task on the TOEFL IBT exam. So let's get right down to it. You say, Michael, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the integrated writing test. These questions confused me. I couldn't find their answers on the internet. There's a lot of questions you will not find on the internet. That's, that's for sure. Uh, can I skip the information if it has been repeated again from the same side? Yes. Number two, what do I do with the little information that they both agree on? When you say they, I think you mean the reading and the listening passage. Uh, if it's minor details, skip it. If it's something major as it relates to, say, three important points in the reading or three important points in the, in the lecture, if it's an important point, you should probably mention it. Number three, should I skip information mentioned only by the lecturer or the author that's not mentioned by the other person? Yes, if it's a minor detail. Your purpose is to try to show the integrated kind of ideas. What, what are the most important points in the reading and how does the lecture relate to those ideas? Number four, when I'm summarizing, can it sometimes reduce the number going back and forth in the same paragraph? Uh, yes. I recommend that you first either talk about the lecture maybe in three or four lines and then talk about the reading passage in three or four lines instead of doing reading, then listening, then reading, then listening again. That's very difficult to do in the same paragraph because you make a lot more transitions. The more transitions you make, the higher the chance you have of having grammatical problems with those transitions. So I don't recommend doing that. Number five, due to the limited time I have for writing 20 minutes and the percentage of information I can comprehend as a human, what information should I leave? What should I prioritize? Uh, for example, main ideas that disagree, things they agree on, information that only one party states, their emphasis, etc. Uh, I would focus on, in many cases, what they disagree on right focus on how the reading and the listening passage disagree with each other how they contradict each other I think that would be really really important okay now let's take a look at a sample I put a sample uh, model essay here this is based on integrated writing practice test number one I think this will give you a good idea on how you can organize your integrated writing now in this case uh, I, I used, really, at beginning with paragraph two, I talked about the listening first and then the reading. You can certainly talk about the reading first and then the listening. It doesn't really matter. Either way works, as long as you stay organized. Okay, paragraph one. For businesses to be successful, the reading passage recommends that all employees participate in all meetings, read all the materials, and bypass the steps of the writing process when writing reports, but the lecture questions the efficiency of these suggestions. So the, the first paragraph basically states the main point of the reading and the listening passage and then shows by using the word but that the lecture disagrees with these ideas. Now, I chose in the next paragraph to begin with the listening passage. You could have certainly started with the reading. First, the professor claims that the number of employee meetings should be limited and short. According to him, meetings longer than 60 minutes might be unproductive since workers usually stop paying attention, especially if leaders spend too much time covering introductory topics. He recommends that instead of calling a meeting, workers should try to deal with issues using emails or making phone calls. In addition, they should either decline going to the meeting or inform participants that they will leave the meeting after 60 minutes. However, the author in the reading passage argues that companies need to schedule as many meetings as possible since they're an excellent way of dealing with problems and staying current with modern work-related technology. You notice here, so this is the information in the lecture right here, and then this is the information in the reading. So I only had to make one transition there. And the, to way, the way I made it the transition was using this transition word of contrast. 
Paragraph 3. Second, workers do not have to read reports entirely according to the speaker in the lecture because it might be a misuse of time. According to him, only small portions of each report are probably important. He thinks that focusing on main ideas is a more efficient way of reading a report. In contrast, the reading states that reading materials given to employees will help them perform better at work and that it is recommended that they read them completely instead of primarily looking for main ideas as a professor suggests in the lecture. So again, uh, in this case, we start off with the speaker here, right? And then we make a, a, uh, a transition to the reading passage here. Then the next paragraph. Lastly, to help employees become more efficient writers, a professor suggests that they follow the steps of the writing process. When it comes to writing reports, the professor explains that workers should not initially try to write in perfect and complete sentences since it will take too long to complete the reports. Instead, for the sake of saving time, he proposes to make an outline, write a quick draft, and finally revise and correct the mistakes. However, the reading states that reports should be written all at once since separating the steps in the writing process wastes time. There you go. And then you have ultimately the lecture cast doubt on the reading passage by stating that having frequent and long meetings, reading all reports in detail, and writing reports all at once will in fact make businesses less efficient and consequently less successful. So there it is. Right? So you can kind of see kind of how, how you can organize your writing there. Now there's a couple of other things uh, I want to point out here. Give me a quick second here so I could do this. And let's just take a look at one of the paragraphs. I think you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about here. Okay, so the, the first thing you'll notice is I want you to look at the actual verbs I'm using and this can help you uh, you'll have fewer problems with verb te verb tense shifts if you remember this so when you summarize the information in the lecture and the reading passage you want to use present tense verbs there you notice the word you got might there's really no tense there right you have he recommends you'll see that you have, again, when you move, they should decline, that they will leave. I didn't say would there. I said the, the reading argues here. And then you have, they are an excellent way of dealing with the problem. So to help you be consistent with your, your language use, right, use present tense verbs to explain the information from the reading or the listening passage. Now, these are what we call in academic writing, they're reporting verbs. So be careful that you're not using the same verb all the time. So I said the word, I said claims, I said might, I said recommends, I said should, I said will leave, I say argues, and then I say are. So you're not using exactly the same reporting verb all the time. So that's something that you can think about. Uh, one other thing is it's important as you're trying to organize these ideas, remember to put a transition word as you move from the information to the reading and then you move to the lecture or the lecture to the reading, you definitely want to use a transition word that kind of shows what that relationship is and that will really help you in terms of showing the connection of your ideas. So those are some things that you should also think about. And an easy way to look at it is if you look at how I organized uh, this particular essay is if you look at let me pull up these three paragraphs here okay what I did my strategy was pretty simple is I I talked about it looks like listening point number one and then reading point number one that's exactly what I did in that paragraph and then in the next paragraph I talked about listening point number two and then I talked about reading point number two right that's what I did there and then in the next paragraph 
I had listening point three and then reading point three within this paragraph. Now, one of the fastest ways to get a lower score here is if you take listening point one and combine that with, say, reading point two or something. There's no logic to that, and it doesn't show what the relationship is there. So it means that you need to have good notes. Your notes need to be accurate, and your notes need to be complete. And the more complete and accurate your notes are, I think the better your chance is of getting 30 out of 30 points. Now, I've had, over the last month or so, I've had several people get between 29 and 30, and every one of these students uh, is very, very organized in how they present the ideas. So it's very easy to see how the points in the reading relate to the points in the listening passage. And that's it, buddy. So those are my answers to your questions. Remember, keep sending the speaking practice so you can get the feedback.